What's up guys, David here. Today we're gonna to talk about the five common rookie mistakes that people make when going on Royal Caribbean cruises. Even if you've gone on Royal Caribbean cruises before, pay attention to these five mistakes so that you don't lose out on time or money. Let's get started. So first mistake is to arrive to your port on embarkation day. So what this means is if your cruise is leaving on a Saturday, you do not want to arrive to the city that the that the cruise is leaving from on that same Saturday. The reason why is because you could run into flight delays, there could be traffic, there could be a lot of different things that could go wrong when arriving to the port to leave on your cruise. Even though you may have until 3.30 in the afternoon to catch that cruise and your flight may arrive at 8 in the morning, you never know what could happen. You do not want to be at the airport no being notified that your flight was canceled and it's on the other side of the country to catch that cruise. The solution to this is to make sure you arrive to your embarkation port the day before the cruise leaves. This way you could stay in a hotel or stay at a friend's house, family member's house, and you could arrive to the port nice and early the next day, stress-free, and catch that cruise. The second mistake is picking the wrong ship. So it all depends on what your goals are when you go on a cruise, what type of experience you want to have, and if you pick the wrong cruise ship, your expectations won't be met. Now, Royal Caribbean is one of the best cruise lines out there in the world. They have the biggest ship in the world. So there are so many different ways you can entertain yourself and have fun on Royal Caribbean cruises. With that said, it doesn't mean that you won't be limited in certain experiences that you may be expecting. For example, when we were going to book our first cruise as a family on Royal Caribbean, we were looking at a smaller ship. Now, I travel with my wife, my six-year-old daughter, and a one-year-old daughter. And when we were looking at a certain cruise, the price was much cheaper than the other ones. The only issue was it wasn't a kid-friendly ship. It was a much smaller ship ship and it was still a nice ship but it didn't have all of the pools the slides all the kids activities as other ships would so we decided to opt out of the smaller ship and go for the bigger ship. We went on the Adventures of the Seas and loved it. Our daughter was in the kids club and played on all the slides and all the water activities that the ship had to offer and we were really happy with that decision. Depending on your traveling scenario, whether with family or if you just want some alone time with your partner or even by yourself, it all depends on the type of ship experience you want. So make sure you do some research to see which is the best ship for your travel needs. The third mistake is picking the wrong room. Now, I know when you look up Royal Caribbean prices and you see the rooms, you may want to go for the cheapest room, which may be the inside room, which is in the inside of the ship. There's no ocean view, there's no window, there's no balcony, it's just on the inside of the ship. Nothing wrong with that, but if you need a little bit more space, if you're traveling with a family, it may make sense to upgrade to a much bigger room. And it may not even be that much bigger. On our first Royal Caribbean cruise on the Adventures of the Seas, we got an ocean view room because we did not want to be uh, confined to the inside room because we thought having a six-year-old and a one-year-old, or actually at the time, our daughter was five years old and six months old, we thought that a inside room would be much smaller. So we decided to go for the ocean view and at least be able to look outside. We had a great time, but I'm not gonna lie, the room was a little tight. If we were to do it over again, I would go for a balcony room. It depends also on how much time you're going to be spending in the room. If you don't have kids that are taking regular naps, then you're probably not gonna be spending that much time in the room. So an inside cabin is probably better for you, especially economically, because then you could use that money saved for excursions or drinks on the ship or specialty dining and really enhance your cruise experience. 
For me and my family, on the other hand, having a six-month-old who was constantly taking naps, two a day actually, we were actually spending more time in the room than most people. The reason why is because uh, I would go into the room during nap time with my daughter and then we would switch off. My wife would be in the room for nap time. And so we actually did spend a lot of time in the room. Therefore, our next cruise, we decided to book a balcony room. This way, when our daughter is taking nap time or resting, balcony to hang out, have some alone time while the kids are sleeping, especially since they do go to sleep much earlier than adults. If we were younger and single and partying, it probably wouldn't make a difference. We would probably do the inside room. So it all depends on what type of travel experience you're looking for who you're traveling with, how many people are gonna be in the room. So keep those factors in mind when booking your room. The next mistake that most people make is only booking shore excursions through Royal Caribbean. Now, Royal Caribbean offers some great excursions activities when you arrive at port, which whatever city you're going to around the world. And they make it really convenient too because you could do it right through the website or right with uh, an agent of Royal Caribbean over the phone. They make it super simple and seamless. The only issue there is that the prices aren't the most economical. If you're gonna book shore excursions, you have a few different options here. You could book through Royal Caribbean, which to be honest is gonna probably be your most expensive option. The next option would be to book through an independent port company. There are plenty of websites that offer reputable companies to book your sh shore excursions through. And it doesn't mean that just because you're paying less money for these shore excursions that is gonna be less quality. Most often, they're actually the same exact excursions, just book through different companies. And if you are going to book shore excursions, try to book them as far in advance as possible. This way you don't run into any issues where there isn't availability for an activity that you really wanna do. Another option is if you are like me and my family, we are pretty adventurous and also spontaneous. So anytime we went to port, since we were traveling with the six months month old, we had no idea what the day would look like, what nap schedule would look like, feeding times, it was all up in the air. So when we were when we would arrive to port, we would actually go to the port, see what the activities were, compare prices with different companies in person walking around and see what our cheapest options were. For example, when we to Maya, Mexico, we decided we just wanted to go to the beach and hang out. If we were to book it through Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean was going to charge $40 a person just to get a ride to the beach and a ride back to the ship. Now, we thought this was a little too expensive, especially since the uh, beach area was only a few minutes away. So we decided to walk out of the port area, find the closest cab driver, and ask them to take us to the beach area. And this only cost us uh, a little less than $5 to get to the beach area. We didn't even have to exchange money or anything. So rather than spending $80 for the two adults that it would cost for us to get to the beach, we spent less than $10 for a round trip to do the same thing. When we arrived to the beach area, they were selling seats on the beach, but we tried to negotiate with them and see if we could get a cheaper price because we weren't part of the package that Royal Caribbean was selling. We were actually able to get the chairs for free. Now, it's important to use discretion in situations like this. Use your best judgment. Don't go out of your way to save money. Don't put yourself in danger or anything like that to try to find the best deal. My family and I have been all over the world and so we're used to finding deals and negotiating and venturing off on our own. So just to give it a little background, our six-year-old daughter has been to 15 different countries and six continents. My wife and I have been backpacking around the world before we had kids. Our one-year-old has been to three countries. So we've done a lot of traveling and we have a lot of experience. 
And if you're wondering, no, we're not rich. We don't have a lot of money for these travels. We do most of our traveling through points and miles, which is what this channel is all about. So if you want to learn how to use credit cards and travel points so that you could travel anywhere in the world almost free, subscribe now and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Also pr publishing cruise videos as well. The next mistake is tipping on top of your auto gratuity. So anytime you book a Royal Caribbean cruise, your gratuities, which is the tips for all the staff, the waiters, the maintenance people, everybody on the ship, they get their tips, their gratuities, when you book your Royal Caribbean cruise. Now, you have an option to pay for the gratuities before you get on the ship and pay for it in advance, or you pay for it at the end of your cruise when they give you a check when it's time to, or they give you a bill when it's time to check out. Either way, this is a cost that you cannot avoid. You are going to pay the gratuities and it's well worth it because the workers work very hard for us and serve us the whole time. And honestly, Royal Caribbean has the best customer service I've ever seen anywhere, not just with cruises, but in general. They are super friendly and go out of their way to make our experiences amazing. Amazing. With that said, don't feel obligated to tip your servers, to tip the waiters and everybody else because they did a great job. You can tip if you want to, if you feel like somebody went out of their way to really make you have a special experience. That's fine, but you don't have to feel obligated to pay tips because you already paid tips with the auto gratuity. Have I missed any mistakes that can really help? Put it down in the comments below and it'll really help out the community and other people. And if you want to watch the tour of the Adventures of the Seas, I do a complete tour. You could click the link on the screen right now or you could click the cruise playlist on the screen and I'll see you in the next video.